you just go ahead and keep loosening these just like I described. You don't want to pull them all the way out a little bit. You want to try and keep them all at the same level because the tension of the camshaft will be pushing up against them and you do not want to strip out any of these holes. You'll notice that the camshaft will be moving up with. Uh, I apologize, we keep filling up memory cards. Um, but again, it's just very tedious. Go back and forth. Make sure you're taking the bolts out at the same level so the, got, the top ads are not twisting. Um, actually, Nissan actually numbered all of these, so you don't have to keep them in order. Just remember which way the numbers are facing. Not ours. We're on the exhaust side, and we can read all of our letters and numbers from this side properly. So we can go ahead and pull these out one by one because they're already all, all loose. And we can go ahead and toss them somewhere that is not going to get dirty. This is Steve's car, so I will be handing them to him. As you can see, they're going to be tight fit. And just make sure that they pull off nice and easy. Don't be torquing on them. They might be suctioned on there a little bit from the oil. All right, now once we're here, sometimes the cam will just pull out, sometimes it won't. If it won't, go ahead and grab an inch wrench and just grab it and just spin it out. It'll come right on out. And go ahead and take this and go ahead and put that bolt that we took out earlier right back into it. As you can see, we're just gonna go ahead and put it back in for storage. That way it doesn't get dirty, we don't lose it, and it stays in the same cam. And again, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. You want to start out in the middle, make sure that everything is evenly pressured all the way through. And I'm actually going to go ahead and have Steve uh, pause the camera again so we don't keep killing batteries. It's like I said, it's pretty straightforward. You just go nice and easy all the way across. It's just kind of time consuming. Go ahead. And again, we're going to go ahead and pull these off now too, that we have them disconnected, they're, they're numbered. But again, you're going to want to keep them somewhere where those, uh, the bolts aren't getting dirty. Because again, we don't want to put anything uh, into the head that might hurt us in the future. And again, we're going to want to go ahead and pull this cam out too, the same way we did with the first one. Just a nice little twist and it'll pop right out. And um, one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind that I didn't say earlier, the cams are different. Um, so pay attention to the color of the marking on the camshaft. Uh, the, on our, the intake is orange. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we remember that. We will make sure we take care of that when we put it back together. From this point, um, where is it? Is it end at the engine? Okay, at this point, we're going to want to go ahead and take out this one other 10 millimeter bolt that I didn't take out earlier. It's right behind the distributor. It's much easier to get it now. Um, it'll take a little while. You're going to have to use a wrench again. You might be able to use a socket, but we don't have any small ones really right here, so I'll just go ahead and pull it up by hand. Now we're going to go ahead and pull out the front, uh, the front nut here that holds the main sprocket on. Again, I have this one also um, marked. I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. I'm not going to take this one all the way out though until we take out. You're going to want to keep it in there a little bit um, because we're going to want to pull out the head bolts first just so it's not wiggling around until that bottom the bottom uh, chain doesn't fall into the the oil pan. We have a pause Alright, now that we got that at least broken loose, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take out the, the head bolts themselves. These are going to be a 10 millimeter Allen and uh, you're going to want a little bit of uh, pressure on it. You're going to want a little bit of a handle. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that they're all the way in. And again, we're going to do the same sort of pattern. We're going to start in the middle and we're going to go cross and we're going to work our, our way out. So, these are going to be on there pretty good. And again, don't go super loose with them. You're going to want to go in a pattern so we don't warp the head or crack it or anything like that. And again, you're going to want it to go in a cross pattern just like you're doing wheels. We're in a little uh, roll boy, a roll boy. Uh, and just stand here so it's like moving a little bit on me. These things are pretty much on there, pretty freaking good. Take four Washington Road or Lake Drive southbound, and you can head all the way down to Silver.
over spring needs to rejoin the freeway. But again, no chance to get by between Bronger Road and Bender Road because of uh, an injury accident on the southbound lane of 43. I'm Mike Conway, the total transit pit line is 414 944 5111. And you're going to want to go ahead and keep loosening them in that same type of pattern. You'll feel them break loose or not. They won't hold on a whole lot of tension for too long. And you just go ahead and just keep going back and forth. And loosening them the rest of the way. And once they're all pretty much loose, and you can turn them pretty freely, then feel free to go ahead and just start pulling them out. Because again, the head is not going to come up the same way that the camshaft did. You just want to make sure that you break them loose in the same type of way though. You can pause it. Now we went ahead and loosen them all. Now we're going to go ahead and pull them out. And actually we are not going, we don't need to keep track of these because these are torque to yield bolts. Which means that every time you, you tighten these down and take them back out, that they are garbage. So go ahead and feel free to throw those in your scrap metal bin because you should not ever reuse these. We sell them at a very reasonable price on the website, along with the entire gasket kit. And uh, like I said, it's a very, very good idea to replace these because they are stretch bolts. That means that you tighten them, then you go another certain portion, and they will actually stretch. And once you get all those out, we can go ahead and take out this front bolt the rest of the way. Nope. And now what, what you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure that you can kind of keep even pressure on this so you're not messing it up on the way out. You just want to kind of try and keep pressure on it so it spreads out nice and smoothly. Kind of a pain, just wiggle it around a little bit so you're not torquing on it. You go ahead and pull that out, you're going to have a big old washer on that that you're going to want to keep. You can let off a little bit of tension. There's a tensioner at the bottom. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want, I always like to zip tie the, the chain to the sprocket itself when we're doing work like this. Just so we don't lose our, uh, so it doesn't fall in or fall off. Just so we have that extra little bit of tension. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and put a couple on here and then if we have something, I'm going to stuff it in there to keep a little bit more tension on that chain so it does not fall in the bottom. Um, again, we do not want the chain to come off the sprockets in the, in, uh, on that lower sprocket uh, on the crank. Because then we could also have problems and bends and belts, which we do not want to do. So it's on there. As long as your tensioner is working properly, you should have plenty of tension on that chain so it's not coming off. At this point, you can go ahead and grab a partner and we can go ahead and wiggle on this bad boy and try and get this head off. And it actually came right off nice and easy. And there's going to be a little bit of coolant. And uh, you can go ahead and throw it off to the side. Go ahead. There's going to be a couple of guide pins in here that you're going to want to make sure that they didn't come out. They're just little uh, round contraptions that go in there. And it looks like our head gasket actually came, is actually pretty smushed here. So that's going to be a good time getting off. But you're just going to want to get underneath it, pull it off. All the way around. And this is also going to be garbage. You would never ever in a million years want to do all this work and then reuse a gasket. Some people, uh, for whatever reason, think it's a good idea. It is not. Um, and at that, um, we have our head off of our KA. Uh, everything on ours actually looks pretty good here. So we're going to conclude this segment. Uh, everything looks nice. And we're going to go ahead and follow up with how to rebuild the head shortly. Thank you very much, Importer Technology.